In this video, we're going to take a look at how you test the RAM installed in your Synology NAS. Typically, you would do this if you've just installed additional RAM into your NAS, you are finding data stored on your NAS is becoming corrupted, or if your NAS continually crashes or randomly reboots. In order to test the RAM fitted to our NAS, we need to use the Synology Assistant app and a computer. You will find a version of Synology Assistant for Windows, Mac OS and Linux in Download Center on Synology's website. After downloading and installing Synology Assistant, when we run the application, it first scans our home network for any Synology devices. Before we try and test our RAM, we need to check preferences to ensure that the option Memory Test has been enabled. To run a memory test, we first need to highlight the device that we wish to test. Then from the menu, if we select Memory Test, a Memory Diagnostic Tool window will open. As our NAS will need to reboot in order to perform its diagnostic test, we are presented with a warning. We are also informed that performing this test can take a considerable amount of time, particularly if we have a lot of RAM installed in our NAS. Let's select Next. We now need to enter the administrator's credentials for our NAS. When we select Finish, our NAS is rebooted and the RAM test will begin. Normally, you are able to monitor the status of a memory test by clicking on the status column. However, for some reason, while we were capturing this video, the status column would not update. It's also worth noting that to test the 8GB of RAM installed into this model of NAS took us over one hour to complete. When the test is completed, our NAS is rebooted and under status, we're provided with a simple report. If under status it says ready, that indicates that our RAM has passed its test. However, for more information about the test that we've just completed, we are going to need to use SSH. SSH, or Secure Shell, is a network protocol that will provide us with a secure way to connect to our NAS. However, because we are using a terminal window and having to type commands, SSH is mostly used by system administrators to perform high-level tasks. In order to use SSH, we first need to enable SSH on our NAS. So let's open Distation Manager using our administrator's credentials. Now if we open Control Panel, under Connectivity, we will find an option called Terminal and SNMP. When we open Terminal and SNMP, we need to tick Enable SSH Service. After selecting Apply, we are warned that by enabling SSH, we could potentially run commands that could damage system files or data. However, as the command that we will be executing only displays the memory test logs, there should be no risk to our data or NAS. Let's select OK. We're now notified that port 22 will be open on the firewall of our NAS. As we need port 22 open in order for the computers on our home network to connect to our NAS via SSH, we're going to select OK. We can now close this station manager. In order to review our RAM diagnostic logs, we now need to sign into our NAS using SSH. So let's take a look at how we use SSH from within Windows and Mac OS. If from the Windows desktop, we select Start, and then from within Search type Terminal, under Best Match, the Terminal app will appear. If we select Terminal, a Terminal window will then open. Now from the command prompt, we need to type SSH, then the name of the administrator's account for our NAS. We then need to type at, 
and the local IP address that our NAS uses. When we press enter on our keyboard, we're informed that our computer is not authenticated, and we are shown a unique ECDSA key. If we type yes, when we press enter on our keyboard, the ECDSA key will be added to our computer. We are now prompted for the administrator's password to our NAS. After entering the password, we are shown a warning that Synology do not recommend that we run commands as root. However, in order to view our memory test logs, we are going to need to use access rights that are higher than our administrator's account. So while using SSH, we need to be very careful with the commands that we run. As you can see from before the command prompt, we're now connected to our NAS via our administrator's account. Let's take a look at our memory test logs by typing sudo cat forward slash far forward slash log forward slash messages pipe grep memtest when we press enter, we're asked for the administrator's password to our NAS. After entering the password, we're shown the results for any memory tests that we've completed. As you can see, our NAS has passed its memory test. However, it would be here that we would see any error codes. Let's close SSH by typing exit. We can now close our terminal window. From macOS, if we open Spotlight Search, type Terminal, and then press Enter on our keyboard, we will open a terminal window. Now from the command prompt, we need to type SSH, then the name of the administrator's account for our NAS. We then need to type at, and the local IP address that our NAS uses. When we press enter on our keyboard, we're informed that our computer is not authenticated, and we are shown a unique ECDSA key. If we type yes, when we press enter on our keyboard, the ECDSA key will be added to our computer. We're now prompted for the administrator's password to our NAS. After entering the password, we are shown a warning that Synology do not recommend that we run commands as root. However, in order to view our memory test logs, we're going to need to use access rights that are higher than our administrator's account. So while using SSH, we need to be very careful with the commands that we run. As you can see from before the command prompt, we're now connected to our NAS via our administrator's account. Let's take a look at our memory test logs by typing sudo cat forward slash Far forward slash log forward slash messages pipe grep memtest. When we press enter, we're asked for the administrator's password to our NAS. After entering the password, we're shown the results for any memory tests that we've completed. As you can see, our NAS has passed its memory test. However, it would be here that we would see any error codes. Let's close SSH by typing exit. We can now close our terminal window. As our NAS passed its RAM test, we no longer need to use SSH. So it's very important that we disable SSH on our NAS and once again block traffic to port 22 on our firewall. If we log back into Disk Station Manager, from the desktop, we now need to select Control Panel. Within Control Panel, we need to once again select Terminal and SNMP. We now need to remove the tick from Enable SSH Service. After clicking Apply, we now need to select Security and then Firewall. Within the Firewall panel, if we select Edit Rules, we will be presented with a list of our firewall rules. 
From this list, we need to locate and untick the encrypted terminal service rule. When we select OK, the firewall to our NAS will no longer accept SSH traffic. We can now log out of Disk Station Manager. So to summarize, in this video, we took a look at how you perform a memory test on a Synology NAS. We then demonstrated how you use SSH to access the logs to your memory test. Finally, for security reasons, we disabled SSH and closed port 22 on our firewall.